Good evening. I'm Mark Andrus, the Bishop of the Episcopal Diocese of California, which is the Episcopal Church in the Bay Area. And I'm speaking from my cathedra, uh, the chair of the bishop in Grace Cathedral, just before the beginning of the great vigil of Easter. We are in the midst of the coronavirus pandemic, and this has uh, restricted the movement of millions and millions of people who are following the best mandates given to us here in California by our governor and our local governments. And we are doing our best as the church as well to continue to offer services that support the people of God as they need to be supported at all times, but especially as you are observing the sheltering in place mandates and staying restricted away from gatherings that would normally be filling this cathedral at the vigil and at uh, Easter day tomorrow. The great vigil is the principal service of Easter, actually even though we all put on our finery on Easter day and gather, uh, it is the vigil for which the early church following in the way of Jesus gathered at uh, Easter after a period of catechism, of teaching, of preparation, of fasting, and of prayer, preparing for baptism. And uh, this baptism was done once a year, not at all times of the year as, as we do today or when grandparents can travel to be with us. And it was, a, it was an event that was the renewal of life for the whole community, not just those being baptized. We're all changed and we all renew our baptismal vows at this time. There are wonderful people who have prepared for confirmation, a related rite to baptism for uh, that evening celebration here at Grace Cathedral. We will not be confirming them uh, tonight, although they will be taking part, the confirmands, in this service that follows my introduction. We will not be lighting the new fire of Easter, and we will not be celebrating the Eucharist during the vigil tonight. But we are gathering, keeping watch, which is what vigil means. Keeping watch in our hearts and in our lives for the rising of new life, which is given to us as a gift from God. We've been practicing spiritual communion here at Grace Cathedral, that is, believing uh, for weeks now, as we gather together, a small group here, faithfully uh, following guidelines for social distancing and hygiene, uh, we've all been restraining or prevented, in many of your cases, from receiving the blessed bread and the wine of the Holy Eucharist. But we believe and we know that as we seek and desire the presence of God, that God meets our need and answers our prayer. So tonight, as we watch for in vigil for the rising of new life within us and among us, that God will meet us. And tomorrow, on Easter Sunday, we will gather again with joy to meet the resurrected Lord uh, on Easter. Thank you. Dear friends in Christ, on this most holy night in which our Lord Jesus passed over from death to life, the church invites her members, dispersed throughout the world, to gather in vigil and prayer. For this is the Passover of the Lord, in which by hearing his word and celebrating his sacraments, we share his victory over death. Let us pray. O God, who for our redemption gave your only begotten Son to the death of the cross and by his glorious resurrection delivered us from the power of our enemy, grant us so to die daily to sin that we may evermore live with him in the joy of his resurrection. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. 
Let us hear now the record of God's saving deeds in history, how God saved the people of the promise in ages past. And let us pray that God will, in our own day, bring all of us to the fullness of redemption. A reading from the book of Genesis. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, let there be light. And there was light. And God saw that the light was good and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day and the darkness he called night. And there was evening and there was morning the first day. And God said, let there be a dome in the midst of the waters and let it separate the waters from the waters. So God made the dome and separated the waters that were under the dome from the waters that were above the dome. And it was so. God called the dome sky and there was evening and there was morning the second day. And God said, let the waters under the sky be gathered together into one place and let the dry land appear. And it was so. God called the dry land earth and the waters that were gathered together he called seas. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, let the earth put forth vegetation, plants yielding seed and fruit trees of every kind on earth that bear fruit with the seed in it. And it was so. The earth brought forth vegetation, plants yielding seed of every kind, and trees of every kind bearing fruit with the seed in it. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the third day. And God said, let there be lights in the dome of the sky to separate the day from the night and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years and let them be lights in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth and it was so god made the two great lights the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night and the stars God set them in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth, to rule over the day and over the night, and to separate the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good, and there was evening, and there was morning, the fourth day. And God said, let the waters bring forth swarms of living creatures, and let birds fly above the earth across the dome of the sky. So God created the great sea monsters and every living creature that moves of every kind with which the waters swarm and every winged bird of every kind. And God saw that it was good. God blessed them saying, be fruitful and multiply and fill the waters in the seas and let birds multiply on the earth. And there was evening and there was morning, the fifth day. And God said, let the earth bring forth living creatures of every kind, cattle and creeping things and wild animals of the earth of every kind. And it was so. God made the wild animals of the earth of every kind and the cattle of every kind and everything that creeps upon the ground of every kind. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, let us make humankind in our image according to our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over the cattle and over all the wild animals of the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created humankind in his image. In the image of God, he created them, male and female, he created them. God blessed them and God said to them, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. God said, See, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is upon the face of all the earth and every tree with seed in its fruit. You shall have them for food. And to every beast of the earth and to every bird of the air and to everything that creeps on the earth, everything that has the breath of life, 
I have given every green plant for food. And it was so. God saw everything that he had made, and indeed it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all their multitude. And on the seventh day God finished the work that he had done, and he rested on the seventh day from all the work that he had done. So God blessed the seventh day and hallowed it, because on it God rested from all the work that he had done in creation. These are the generations of the heavens and the earth when they were created. Here ends the reading. Let us pray. O God, who wonderfully created and yet more wonderfully restored the dignity of human nature, grant that we may share the divine life of him who humbled himself to share our humanity, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. The Lord said to Noah, go into the ark, you and all your household. For I have seen that you alone are righteous before me in this generation. Take with you seven pairs of all clean animals, the male and its mate, and a pair of the animals that are not clean, the male and its mate, and seven pairs of the birds of the air also, male and female, to keep their kind alive on the face of all the earth. For in seven days I will send rain on the earth for 40 days and 40 nights. And every living thing that I have made, I will blot out from the face of the ground. And Noah did all that the Lord had commanded him. In the 600th year of Noah's life, in the second month, on the 17th day of the month, on that day, all the fountains of the great deep burst forth, and the windows of the heavens were opened. The rain fell on the earth, 40 days and 40 nights. On the very same day, Noah, with his sons Shem and Ham and Japheth, and Noah's wife, and the three wives of his sons, entered the ark, they and every wild animal of every kind, and all domestic animals of every kind, and every creeping thing that creeps on earth, and every bird of every kind, every bird, every winged creature, 
they went into the ark with, uh, with Noah, two and two, of all the flesh in there, in which there was the breath of life. And those that entered, male and female of all flesh, went in as God had commanded him, and the Lord shut him in. The flood continued 40 days on the earth, and the waters increased and bore up the ark. And it rose high above the earth. The waters swelled and increased greatly on the earth. And the ark floated on the face of the water. At the end of the 40 days, Noah opened up the window of the ark that he had made and sent out the raven. And it went to and fro until the waters were dried from the earth. Then he sent out the dove to see if the waters had subsided from the face of the ground. But the dove found no place to set its foot and it returned to the ark for the waters were still on the face of the whole earth so he put out his hand and took it and brought it into the ark with him he waited another seven days and again he sent out the dove from the ark and the dove came back to him in the evening and there in its beak was a freshly plucked olive leaf so Noah knew that waters had subsided from the earth. Then he waited another seven days and sent out the dove and it did not return to him anymore. In the 601st year, in the first month of the first day of the month, the waters were dried up from the earth and Noah removed the covering of the ark and looked and he saw that the face of the ground was drying. In the second month, on the 27th day of the month, the earth was dry. Then God said to Noah, go out of the ark, you and your wife and your sons and your sons' wives with you. Bring out with you every living thing that is with you of all flesh, birds and animals and every creeping thing that creeps on the earth so that they may be abound on the earth and be fruitful and multiply on the earth. So Noah went out with his sons and his wife and his sons' wives. And God said to Noah and to his sons with him, as for me, I am establishing my covenant with you and your descendants after you and with every living creature that is with you, the birds, the domestic animals, and every animal of the earth with you, as many as came out of the ark. I establish my covenant with you that never again shall all flesh be cut off by the waters of a flood and never again shall there be a flood to destroy the earth. God said, this is the sign of the covenant that I make between me and you and every living, living creature that is with you for all future generations. I have set my bow in the clouds and it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. Here ends the lesson. Let us pray. 
Almighty God, you have placed in the skies the sign of your covenant with all living things. Grant that we, who are saved through water and the Spirit, may worthily offer to you our sacrifice of thanksgiving. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. As Pharaoh drew near, the Israelites looked back, and there were the Egyptians advancing on them. In great fear, the Israelites cried out to the Lord. They said to Moses, Was it because there were no graves in Egypt that you have taken us away to die in the wilderness? What have you done to us bringing us out of Egypt? Is this not the very thing we told you in Egypt? Let us alone and let us serve the Egyptians, for it would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than to die in the wilderness. But Moses said to the people, Do not be afraid. Stand firm and see the deliverance that the Lord will accomplish for you today. For the Egyptians whom you see today, you shall never see again. The Lord will fight for you, and you have only to keep still. Then the Lord said to Moses, Why do you cry out to me? Tell the Israelites to go forward. But you lift up your staff and stretch out your hand over the sea, and divide it, that the Israelites may go into the sea on dry ground. Then I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians, so that they will go in after them. And so I will, gla- I will gain glory for myself over Pharaoh and all his army, his chariots and his chariot drivers. And the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord, when I have gained glory for myself over Pharaoh, his chariots, and his chariot drivers. The angel of God, who was going before the Israelite army, moved and went behind them, and the pillar of cloud moved from in front of them and took its place behind them. It came between the army of Egypt and the army of Israel. And so the cloud was there with the darkness, and it lit up the night. One did not come near the other all night. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea. The Lord drove the sea back by a strong east wind all night and turned the sea into dry land, and the waters were divided. The Israelites went into the sea on dry ground, the water forming a wall for them on their right and on their left. The Egyptians pursued and went into the sea after them. All of Pharaoh's horses, chariots, and chariot drivers. At the morning watch, the Lord, in the pillar of fire and cloud, looked down upon the Egyptian army and threw the Egyptian army into panic. He clogged their chariot wheels so that they turned with difficulty. The Egyptians said, Let us flee from the Israelites, for the Lord is fighting for them against Egypt. Then the Lord said to Moses, stretch out your hand over the sea so that the water may come back upon the Egyptians, upon their chariots and chariot drivers. So Moses stretched out his hand over the sea and at dawn, the sea returned to its normal depth. As the Egyptians fled before it, the Lord tossed the Egyptians into the sea. The waters returned and covered the chariots and the chariot drivers. Entire army of Pharaoh that had followed them into the sea, not one of them remained. But the Israelites walked on dry ground through the sea, the waters forming a wall for them on their right and on their left. Thus the Lord saved Israel that day from the Egyptians, and Israel saw the Egyptians dead on the seashore. Israel saw the great work that the Lord did against the Egyptians. So the people feared the Lord and believed in the Lord and in his servant Moses. Then the prophet Miriam, Aaron's sister, took a tambourine in her hand and all the women went out after her with tambourines and with dancing. And Miriam sang to them, sing to the Lord for he has triumphed gloriously. Horse and rider he has thrown into the sea. Here ends the reading.
let us pray. O God, whose wonderful deeds of old shine forth even to our own day, you once delivered by the power of your mighty arm your chosen people from slavery under Pharaoh, to be a sign for us of the salvation of all nations by the water of baptism. Grant that all the peoples of the earth may be numbered among the offspring of Abraham and rejoice in the inheritance of Israel through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. Say to the house of Israel, Thus says the Lord God, I will take you from the nations and gather you from all the countries and bring you into your own land. I will sprinkle clean water on you and you shall be clean from all your uncleannesses and from all your idols I will cleanse you. A new heart I will give you and a new spirit I will put within you. And I will remove from your body the heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. I will put my spirit within you and make you follow my statutes and be careful to observe my ordinances. Then you shall live in the land that I gave to your ancestors, and you shall be my people, and I will be your God. Here ends the reading. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, who in the Paschal Mystery established the new covenant of reconciliation, grant that all who are reborn into the fellowship of Christ's body may show forth in their lives what they profess by their faith, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. The hand of the Lord came upon me, and he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord and set me down in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. He led me all around them. There were very many lying in the valley, and they were very dry. He said to me, Mortal, can these bones live? I answered, O Lord God, you know. Then he said to me, 
prophesy to these bones and say to them, O dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, I will cause breath to enter you, and you shall live. I will lay sinews on you, and will cause flesh to come upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and you shall live, and you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I had been commanded. And as I prophesied, suddenly there was a noise, a rattling, and the bones came together, bone to its bone. I looked, and there were sinews on them, and flesh had come upon them, and skin had covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, prophesy to the breath, prophesy mortal, and say to the breath, Thus says the Lord God, come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain, that they may live. I prophesied as he had commanded me, and the breath came into them. And they lived and stood on their feet, a vast multitude. Then he said to me, mortal, these bones are the whole house of Israel. They say, our bones are dried up, and our hope is lost. We are cut off completely. Therefore prophesy and say to them, thus says the Lord God, I am going to open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people, and I will bring you back to the land of Israel. And you shall know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people. I will put my spirit within you, and you shall live, and I will place you on your own soil. Then you shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken and will act, says the Lord. Here ends the reading. Let us pray. Almighty God, by the Passover of your Son, you have brought us out of sin into righteousness and out of death into life. Grant to those who are sealed by your Holy Spirit the will and the power to proclaim to you all the world. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Through the Paschal mystery, dear friends, we are buried with Christ by baptism into his death and raised with him to newness of life. 
I call upon you, therefore, to join with those who are to receive the sacrament of new birth and renew your own baptismal covenant. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Will you continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship, in the breaking of bread, and in the prayers? I will, with God's help. Will you persevere in resisting evil, and whenever you fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord? I will, with God's help. Will you proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ? I will, with God's help. Will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself? I will, with God's help. And will you strive for justice and peace among all people and respect the dignity of the earth and of every human being? I will, with God's help. Grant, O Lord, that all who are baptized into the death of Jesus Christ, your Son, may live in the power of his resurrection and look for him to come again in glory, who lives and reigns now and forever. Amen. Amen. Rejoice now, heavenly hosts and choirs of angels, and let your trumpets shout salvation. For the victory of our mighty King. Rejoice and sing now all the round earth, bright with a glorious splendor. For darkness has been vanquished by our eternal King. Rejoice and be glad now, Mother Church, and let your holy courts in radiant light resound with the praises of your people. All you who stand near this marvelous and holy flame, pray with me to God the Almighty, for the grace to sing the worthy praise of this great light. Through Jesus Christ, his Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with him in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and good always and everywhere with our whole heart and mind and voice to praise you the invisible, almighty, and eternal God, and your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, 
For he is the true Paschal Lamb, who at the feast of the Passover paid for us the debt of Adam's sin, and by his blood delivered your faithful people. This is the night when you brought our forebears, the children of Israel, out of bondage in Egypt and led them through the Red Sea on dry land. This is the night when all who believe in Christ are delivered from the gloom of sin and are restored to grace and holiness of life. This is the night when Christ broke the bonds of death and hell and rose victorious from the grave. How wonderful and beyond our knowing, O oh God, is your mercy and loving kindness to us that to redeem a slave you gave a son. How holy is this night when wickedness is put to flight and sin is washed away. It restores innocence to the fallen and joy to those who mourn. It casts out pride and hatred and brings peace and concord. How blessed is this night when earth and heaven are joined and we are reconciled to God. Therefore, O Holy Father, accept the evening sacrifice of this lighted candle, which your Holy Church makes before you and offers to you by the hands of your servants the work of the bees, your creatures. May it shine continually to drive away all darkness. May Christ, the morning star who knows no setting, find it ever burning. He who gives light to all creation and who lives and reigns forever and ever. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen in me. Alleluia.
May God be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O oh God, who made this most holy night to shine with the glory of the Lord's resurrection, stir up in your church that spirit of adoption which is given to us in baptism, that we, being renewed in both body and mind, may worship you in sincerity and truth. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Romans. Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Therefore, we have been buried with him by baptism into death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, so we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we will certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We know that our old self was crucified with him so that the body of sin might be destroyed and we might no longer be enslaved to sin. For whoever has died is freed from sin. But if we have died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. We know that Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death he died, he died to sin once for all, but the life he lives, he lives to God. So you also must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel of our Savior, Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory to you. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciple set out and went toward the tomb. The two were running together. But the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrapping lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came, following him, and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrapping lying there and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple, who reached the tomb first, also went in and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white sitting there where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. The Paschal Homily, written by St. John Chrysostom. Are there any who are devout lovers of God? Let them enjoy this beautiful, bright festival. Are there any who are grateful servants? Let them rejoice and enter into the joy of their Lord. Are there any weary from fasting? Let them now receive their due. If any have toiled from the first hour, let them receive their reward. 
If any have come after the third hour, let them with gratitude join in the feast. Those who arrived after the sixth hour, let them not doubt, for they shall not be shortchanged. Those who have tarried until the ninth hour, let them not hesitate, but let them come too. And those who arrived only at the 11th hour, let them not be afraid by reason of their delay. For the Lord is gracious and receives the last even as the first. The Lord gives rest to those who come at the 11th hour, even as to those who toiled from the beginning. To one and all the Lord gives generously. The Lord accepts the offering of every work. The Lord honors every deed and commends their intention. Let us all enter into the joy of the Lord. First and last alike, receive your reward. Rich and poor, rejoice together. Conscientious and lazy, celebrate the day. You who have kept the fast and you who have not, Rejoice this day, for the table is bountifully spread. Feast royally, for the calf is fatted. Let no one go away hungry. Partake all of the banquet of faith. Enjoy the bounty of the Lord's goodness. Let no one grieve being poor, for the universal reign has been revealed. Let no one lament persistent failings for forgiveness has risen from the grave. Let no one fear death, for the death of our Savior has set us free. The Lord has vanquished death by enduring it. The Lord vanquished hell when he descended into it. The Lord put hell in turmoil, even as it tasted of his flesh. Isaiah foretold this when he said, you, O hell, were placed in turmoil when he encountered you below. Hell was in turmoil, having been eclipsed. Hell was in turmoil, having been mocked. Hell was in turmoil, having been destroyed. Hell was in turmoil, having been abolished. Hell was in turmoil, having been made captive. Hell grasped the corpse and met God. Hell seized earth and encountered heaven. Hell took what it saw and was overcome by what it could not see. O oh, death, where is your sting? O oh, hell, where is your victory? Christ is risen, and you are cast down. Christ is risen, and the demons are fallen. Christ is risen, and the angels rejoice. Christ is risen, and life is set free. Christ is risen, and the tomb is emptied of its dead. For Christ, having risen from the dead, is become the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. To Christ be glory and power forever and ever. Amen. Let us turn to God in Christ, by whose mighty acts we too are risen to newness of life. For the church, proclaim through your servant church the good news of Christ's resurrection, we pray. Risen Christ, hear our prayer. For those seeking baptism, close them with the garments of new life and hope, we pray. Risen Christ, hear our prayer. For the world, in this Easter of surpassing grace, bring peace from war, health from sickness, light from darkness, and life from death, we pray. Risen Christ, hear our prayer. For the Jewish people at Passover, bless their celebrations with joy in the Lord's deliverance, we pray. Risen Christ, hear our prayer. For all who are sick or suffering, lonely or afraid, preserve those afflicted with the coronavirus first responders and health care workers. As we remember those who have asked our prayers, wherever you are, you are invited to speak their names out loud. Jonathan and Marion. 
Ron and Lori. Peter and Christy. Restore them to life and health, we pray. Risen Christ, hear our prayer. For all who have died, gather Russell and the Reverend Antonio Checo, as well as Philip Fox, Frank Moon, Isaac Espinoza, the Reverend William Sloan Coffin, Herbert Henderson, Wendell Witter, and Vera Bull, whose anniversaries of death we remember today, along with our beloved dead. Wherever you are, you are invited to speak their names out loud. Raise them to the light of your eternal presence, we pray. Risen Christ, hear our prayer. God of all peace and reconciliation, we give thanks to you for the human family and for the natural world which we share with all of your creatures. In the face of social and personal conflict, inspire us to build bridges that connect us so that we might respect the dignity of the earth and of every human person. We ask this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Whether online, at home, or here at Grace, please join in the Lord's Prayer in the language of your heart. Our Father in heaven, hallowed, hallowed be your name. name. Your, your kingdom, kingdom come, come. Your, your will be done, done on earth as in heaven. heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen.
God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do good God's will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in God's sight, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thank you for joining us at the great vigil of Easter here at Grace Cathedral. When Pope John XXIII summoned the Roman Catholic Church to the Second Vatican Council in the early 1960s, the liturgical reform and the reform of the life of the Christian Church spread all over the world to other denominations. And it is said, with some historical uh, evidence behind it, that one of the first reintroductions of the great vigil of Easter within the Episcopal Church took place here at Grace Cathedral in the 1960s uh, under Bishop Pike. We, whether that happened exactly as I just said it or not, we are grateful that you joined us for the great vigil of Easter and we hope that you will join us for Easter Sunday at 11 a.m. tomorrow Pacific time. Thank you and God bless you.